To start, could you tell us about The Loneliest Boy in the World and how you came across the script? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we were given the script by uh, Piers Ashworth, uh, the writer. And um, yeah, we kind of, I, I read it as a director and, and Matt's producer read it and kind of just loved it straight away. It was kind of right in my wheelhouse of things that I enjoy and things that I like. And then quickly realized that the film was actually originally written in the 80s and Piers wrote it with uh, Brad Wyman and Emilio, Emilio Estevez in, in the 80s. You know, the script was optioned and developed for you know, the best part of 40 years. Um, but never got made and it almost got made a few times so from my perspective it was great to see the movie being made but there was an additional pressure to kind of do these guys and their story justice hmm, great answer a perfect segue to this next question but this film feels like a love letter to classic 80 films while also bringing something very unique how were you able to tow that line and where did you draw inspiration from as you brought the story to life from the page to the screen um, yeah, good, good question. Um, I think very much, I was very aware from the start that, like a lot of the, a lot of 80s movies, that, that the film, it kind of crosses genres, which is obviously less common these days and everything seems to be more kind of genre specific. So I knew that was always going to be a challenge because there's comedy in the film, there's drama, you know, horror, um, it's kind of fantasy, there's a bit of everything in there, yeah. which... I think, you know, we definitely associate with particularly movies of the kind of late 80s, very early 90s. So um, my, my approach really was to try and do the story justice and at the same time, you know, really not forget, even though we surround all these crazy elements, not forget that the story is one of a young man who's dealing with grief and, and kept going back to that all the time and, you know, trying to focus in on that because everything else that surrounds it is the packaging. But ultimately, it's a different way of telling a story of, of how somebody who's isolated deals with the, the, the passing of their, of their mother. Yeah. Not only are you blending all these different genres together, it's visually stunning. Is there a particular scene or sequence that you're really excited for audience to see when it drops? Good question. Uh, <laughs> which one do I really like? I like, I really like um, the first time Oliver goes to the graveyard. So like when he kind of makes the decision and he, and, and he kind of goes, I, I like that sequence a lot. And I like when he goes back the second time and he, and he speaks to, to Hero, who's just motionless in the chair. And, and he says to him, you know, I really got to, I really got to do this match. And, and he goes, that whole sequence, I really enjoy as well. I really particularly like the stuff at the graveyard. You actually started your career off as an actor. What has that transition been like going from being in front of the camera to now behind it? Good question. Um, I, I know what, I, I basically know what people shouldn't do in front of the <laughs> that, 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 that would be my, my um, answer to that. I kind of just, maybe the front of the camera just kind of, happened really and and then my kind of aspiration was always to be behind behind the camera mm. um so i just think that it definitely helps me to um it definitely helps me to i think understand the process and the challenges that an, act, that an actor has and i think the same you know i just very few weeks ago wrapped uh, producing a film and I've, I've been producer on a bunch of stuff but at lead producing a film and, and that gave me again the same thing it gave me a different perspective from a producer's perspective than being a director and I think it's just every time you jump across you see that you understand other people's roles and you understand the compromises that you sometimes need to make to be to be part of a team I think. Yeah, great answer. And how, how beneficial would you say your experience in front of the camera has been as you've collaborated with this set of actors, which is like a nice blend of established and up and coming? Yeah, I, I think I think my main thing is I've just, I've learned, I, I always thought as an actor, you don't really want to be taught, you know, your, your basic craft is to have an actor as an actor. So when, you know, my approach as a director is never to tell an actor how to act. And I don't do it like this, mm. do it like that's wrong, this is right, because it's so subjective. So my kind of thing I've always tried to maintain as a director is like, you cast people and by casting them, you trust them to do the job. You don't need to micromanage them. You don't need to, like, they're capable of doing that job. 
and they will do it well. And I, my job is simply there is to simply slightly tweak and slightly enhance that performance. But ultimately, you know, it's their it's their job and their responsibility, and you have to trust them to do that. I think. Yeah, you also make a little cameo yourself in the film. How did that come to fruition? Um, I just, I just like doing it. I just think it's just funny. Um, but it was just, it was like, I didn't really look like me. Um, yeah. I remember, I remember I sent a picture to my mother and she was like, why are you sending me a picture of this guy? And I was like, oh, it's me. And it didn't look like myself. And, um, you know, I just, I just always think it's fun. But the problem was doing the scene was, he rose obviously just like this on the sofa, like pretending to be dead. And he rose the whole time, just like, was like, I can't, this is ridiculous, Martin. Like, you were just all laughing the whole time because the entire sequence is ridiculous. Um, but it's just a bit of fun. I enjoy doing it, you know? Reviews for the film are slowly coming out now. It's been incredibly well received. What do you think is resonating most with audiences? What do you hope they take away? Um, I just, I just hope that they, I hope that they enjoy the film and go on the journey and, 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 and you know, laugh in the right places, cry in the right places, are engaged in the right places. And, and ultimately, I, I think just that very simple lesson, you know, of not, just because somebody's different, don't judge them because you don't know what's going on in their life yeah. behind those doors. You know, I think it's something that I think we, a, a lot of us have done and are guilty of doing at some point in our life, judging someone when you don't know the full story, I think. Yeah, perfect. So I got this next question too. But there's so many universal themes that this story touches upon. Why do you think this comedy slash horror genre lends itself to this type of storytelling? Um, I think because you can kind of you can tell a story in in this genre kind of exactly as you want to tell it, unashamedly and unbiasedly and unjudged. And I think that you know you you have complete freedom and, and and the kind of that if you like that totality of being able to do w what you want and push it in different different directions and I'm, and I'm not sure that other genres away from from horror I, I would have been able to to make a movie that ultimately does cross genre it, it's ultimately it's, it's it's in it's it's in the horror world like it's, it's very much in that world and that's it's stable but it crosses genres but I, I couldn't have made this movie as a as a drama, or as a, you know, it, it, it's like yeah. it was only only really this this world and the genre that audience, more, most importantly, will go into and watch the film with with an open mind and an open heart. And you know, we did a, a screening here in the UK last week, and um, Max and I were there, and, and Ben Miller, and it was so nice because so much of the audience stayed behind and said to us, "I didn't know what I was expecting. I don't normally yeah. like." horror or comedy and cross genre and, and and just across the board they all really really embraced it and, and liked it and it spoke to them so yeah you know this that's the main thing this 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 genre audience um are very very you know um i think yeah they just they they, they, they will empathize the character and give yeah. you a chance give the story a chance and, and don't judge and i think that's the main thing that we hope will resonate and we hope that i hope that you know horror fans and genre fans will, will embrace them will embrace the movie it definitely does and they definitely will we're living in such an interesting time what are some of the challenges and advantages of filming during a pandemic good question i mean i think absolutely that there's kind of challenges and advantages there's an advantage to shooting and a location where nobody's there. So everyone's locked down, but then also nobody's there. And it's weird. And it's like, you know, yeah. it's odd being in a, uh, a town center or somewhere and there'd be nobody around. And we, you know, we shot the film when there'd only be like, you know, one shop open like in the town and like nothing was open, pubs were closed, everything was still closed. So it felt weird. It kind of felt like to me anyway, made me as a director feel a bit more relatable to all of the story because we kind of felt mm. isolated as, as yeah. kind of all of us in his world. So I think there's definitely some kind of authenticity to the filmmaking, I think, that we perhaps otherwise wouldn't have got. Like we were saying before we jumped on this call, but uh, Hero and Max both sing your praises about how you were able to create this collaborative environment. How did you build the trust with, with your actors so that they could take agency over their characters? Um, I think I think it's two two simple things. It's not it's nothing 
that I do or anything that I did, we were, we were very fortunate to get um, very, very talented actors who could all tour the line of the comedy and the drama really, really well in a genre film, which is not easy. Um, and secondly, they were all really, really easy to work with and super collaborative and really cared. That was the main thing. They all really, really cared about what they were doing. So really, I can sit here and say, oh, I did this. My job was the easiest. I wasn't sat in makeup for hours and hours a day. You know, like I just turned up, had my breakfast, walked in, and he was being sat in the chair for four hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got one final question for you. Besides this film, where can fans see you next? Um, so I, I just produced a film, um, which I can't talk about because it hasn't been press release yet, annoyingly. Um, <laughs> so that, that was, and that was actually, that was a genre movie, um, a really, really, um, dark psychological genre movie actually. Um, and the director did an amazing job and again, had an amazing, amazing cast. And then I'm directing a, a comedy in um in january which um actually audiences will be able to see as soon as i think like next september it gets released pretty quick mm -hmm. after we shoot so, yeah, that's what we're doing next to comedy